Hey guys, Stevie here from Northern Wilderness Bushcraft in County Durham. Um, today I'm out with my lovely other half, Jilly. Um, I've brought her out today because it's the first time while camping in about the 10 years we've actually been together. Normally we'll go away in our T25 camper van and go like Cornwall, Devon, surfing and things. But today I've actually convinced her into hammock camping. So I thought, well, while I'm here, I might as well do a little video on how I put up my hammock. Now, this doesn't say, necessarily say you guys have got to do it this way, but it's a cool little way of doing things, so I thought I might as well show you which way I've done it, and I might give you guys some tips or whatever. There's loads of videos out there on how to do these things. But uh, yeah, let's have a look and see what we can do. Right, so one of the first things you want to do, you want to look for a spot to where you want to hammock camp. Obviously there's plenty around. The spot I've chosen today is over here, this area here. Now I do have a shelter on the far side, uh, but it doesn't matter, it's not going to affect me. I'll just put the, the rope around the tree. But a uh, spot roughly, people say about 15 feet apart um, is a good size, but also I think it depends on the height and how much obviously cordage and stuff you've got. But that's roughly the area I'm going to use today. There's our dog, Little Reef, he's with us today, rolling about in the woods. And there's Jilly. <laughs> right, now one thing you've got to do guys when you're here is have a quick look up. Obviously checking out for any kind of deadfall, any bits right above your camp that's going to come down. So have a good look at your branches and stuff like that and just double check everything. There's nothing worse than if you're going to be sound asleep and all of a sudden something's coming down on top of your head during the night. So let's, next, let's have a look at the camp. Right, what I've got here guys is tree huggers, um, or basically this was the cord that comes in the end of the DD hammock, naturally comes in the side. But what we do is, I tie a bit of paracord to the end of this, um, well double the, double the paracord, obviously you've got two lengths that I'll show you in the hammock in a moment, and I tie it through the end and I'll actually pull this out of the hammock, replacing it with the lighter, uh, yeah it could say stronger, maybe even doubled paracord. And what we use this for is because it's a flat material, it's designed to go around the tree so it doesn't roll when you're in your hammock. So the idea is what we do is we create this big loop. Let me see this. See that? And then what we do is we place a series of knots with openings on the way down it. And then what we do is we put a carabiner on the end of the actual hammock and then just clips to this. So I want to put this up now and demonstrate just how you would do this. and this is what my hammock normally comes into, so that's the one I've got. I've got the front line, um, this is just a regular front line, I don't believe it's the XL, yeah, this is the DD front line normal. XL is recommended if you're over like six foot I think, um, don't quote me on that, I'm not sure, but double check with DD themselves. Um, we can actually sell these as well, so if you inquire with ourselves we'll give you a price on these um, and we'll let you know how much they are if you inbox us or whatever uh, and we'll try and do a really good deal, best we can anyway. What I've got here guys is call a snake skin and my hammock actually goes in this. Now this is perfect for wet weather camping like here in the UK. A lot of you guys maybe who's new to hammock camping or have never looked at these, it is worth looking at a viable option. And the reason being I use this with a carabiner. As you can see on the end of this one you can see where we put the paracord through there and the carabiner on the end. These are climbing carabiners so they're going to support your weight and it simply goes through the end. See that? How the paracords went through the material. And what I'll do with this, now I'll put the tree huggers on, all I have to simply do is open, connect and adjust to the relevant height. I try and keep from my height, I'm five foot nine, I try and keep the ropes roughly, roughly about my chest height, uh, top of my shoulders, and then I'll adjust it up and down as and when I need to. With the flat rope, like I said, it won't roll, so it'll keep you in place all the way through. As you can see here, there's the carabiner hooked up between the knots, so it's really simple. Um, there's the double side of power cord, which works very well. Obviously when you put this up as well, make sure that you've got the right way so your fly sheet's at the top. So just be careful when you put that up, because you don't want to put it up and your fly sheet be in the wrong, wrong area. As you can see, this is pulled off to one side now, so I need to straighten that up, and then we can uh, remove the snake skin by the time we've got everything else set up. The idea of the snake skin though, guys, is it keeps the weather off it, keeps the rain off it, it's a great thing that DD hammocks have done. Um, it's ideal if you're out for the day, you're doing your, your bits and pieces around the woodland, just pull your snakeskin over your full sleep system and uh, leave it like that. Obviously, you, you can't do it with your sleeping bag and everything's inside as well. You do need to roll that away unless it's a very thin sleeping bag. But yeah, that works absolutely fine. Wrong. Wrong. 
with the front line you get these little poles there you go they just go together and they've got little rubber ends on them and um, the idea of this is that these just go in the top of the fly sheet and it keeps them further apart if you didn't have these a small stick could work um, however a small stick unless you smooth it off could actually tear your material right now now that I've got everything in position uh, before I put my bars and stuff and I put my fly sheet on I first want to test it just to make sure that it is the right height the way I find about doing this is putting it just above your ass your, your butt cheeks just in this area where your belt would be and just pull it down a little bit have a feel generally open it up and just be careful when you first sit in a hammock so you don't swing over the back that to me for me and my height is perfect and if you look where my feet are I'm sitting in this position so you can see my shape of my feet here I'm sitting in a comfortable position inside the hammock this allows me obviously stability when I'm climbing in and out the hammock but also means I can take my boots off quite easily the hammock will drop slightly during the night just a small fraction but um, so it's worth noting the adjustments that you need to make to right when you pull out the fly sheet when you pull out the fly sheet you'll see you've got this green thing here this is where the pole goes through it's got little eyelets in it the eyelets are just going to be inside the ends of them. There we go, there's one on this side here. So you can see it's been stitched like this. Very simple. Put the pole in, a wiggle, all in the end there. And what you've got to do is you've got to make sure he goes all the way through to the end and then pull him over so he's encapsulized just inside there. There we go. That's the first pole in. Then what I'll do, I'll then tie this off later on to my top line and that'll actually lift out the full fly net on the actual hammock itself. Now as you can see, it is set up, we've got the fly net to the, all set underneath there. One side's a little bit skew with a little bit lopsided to the other side, but it'll actually, I'll work that out in a moment. Um, to see if you're just making sure that it all works. Now the big thing is, what happens when I sit in it? One thing I will advise is on the inside, put some paracord on the end of your zip. And this helps you when you're lying in it to be able to reach for the zip and get up, especially if you've got a little bit of a belly on you. So now we're in. Again, we'll test it. Ah, oh, now this, this is the life. Hey buddy. Well, Jill and the dog stole me hammock. So, <laughs> I think they're quite comfortable. You alright there, Jilly? Yeah. Yeah, you alright there, Reefy? 
hey. <laughs> oh, bless. Look at that little face. So how adorable is that? Look at that. Little foxhound. He's a mix between a Jack Russell and a King Charles. And there he is. Loving the sway. Don't we all just love the sway of the hammock? He likes it because he can also see out as well. Anyway, let now let's look at the under blanket. Right guys, this is what I've got here. I've got the DD. Have a look here. This is the DD under blanket. Um, now the folks at DD are absolutely awesome when I bought this. Um, sadly, I have had two of them though, and although I'm not really reviewing this, I will say you need to be careful. The elastics on these DD get sorted because I've had two now, and the elastics on them have both snapped. They've come off the end, so you've got to reattach them, tie your own through. It's not a really big deal. Um, I did think maybe I was over tightening them and stuff like that, and it turns out it wasn't just me. My friend Gillen had the same issue, um, and a few other people I spoke to have had the same issue for the ends, which have little carabiners on, which clip and pull off up against the actual end of the hammock um, and what this does it, it kind of pulls it out um, a bit like the hammock itself it kind of makes an under hammock if you like and I actually thought that maybe when I sat in it it just has too much pressure on it and it has pinged it but it's an elasticated material and it should take quite a bit to pull out it just won't stitch in very well but apart from that they are actually worth it um, <laughs> doesn't sound like it but they actually are really good I don't know if there's there is probably other under blankets on the market you guys probably use and some of you guys may have never had an issue like this I don't know if it's a regular thing or it was just we got a bad a bad run because we bought ours at the same time I don't know um, but yeah these are pretty epic uh, they keep you super warm and the way these work is very simple it's a bit like a quilt and I've actually going to make one of these out of an old sleeping bag and basically you just you put it on underneath the hammock and you've got to leave a gap and air pocket underneath you and this so they don't want to be touching each other and this air pocket needs to be there so when you sit inside it it cradles just the bottom of you and the hot air gets trapped in the middle of that and that allows a warm pocket of air to stay under you and keeps your bum and your back warm because there's nothing worse than waking up in the middle of the night three four in the morning and you're absolutely freezing and you haven't got an under blanket um i use this mostly now autumn all the way through winter but I've actually slept in this down to minus 10 and it's kept me warm that was with the Jura 2 sleeping bag as well which I'll see a little bit later on Guys, now the issue I refer to is the very end. You can see it's cinched up here. If I show you this, right? Let's get this in some sort of order so you can recognise it. So basically, this would hang underneath your sleeping bag. And this was where imagine your head is above this area. This here is one of the toggles, which has this section opens out and keeps it the end taut and pulled together. As you can clearly see on this end of the material, right here. You can see there's this elastic coming out, which has a carabiner on the end. This elastic comes all the way along inside of here, and this one seems to go all the way through the entire blanket. However, this side snapped, and the elastic is lost inside. It's in the middle of here somewhere, just about there. So it's not ideal really, but how the elastic snapped, I don't know. I think what it is, it's when they stitched it in, the very end piece. If you have a look here, this one's doing the very same it's stitched in at the end to nip it and it's weakened the actual elastic and that's a mate that's allowed it to physically snap so that needs to be looked at with this technology maybe not stitching it in might be a better option um, leaving it loose so you can actually pull it along and adjust it will be even better um, than stitching it actually in place because it's a lot, enough material inside of here and it goes through the full body but allowing it to snap kind of kind of sucks really but I'm going to put this on and you'll see how it's done So basically, the hammock itself has these bits of webbing attached to it through the sides. The under blanket, which is here, has webbing coming off it. And in this case, I've got a small carabiner or a piece of elastic, depending on how I need to adjust it. All you'd simply do, open up the webbing, put the clip through and get it through. Pretty straightforward, really. Well, oh, seeing that, it's got to keep catching the clip. There we go. So I put it through and that's now that part put in. The next section I'll do the other side and then I'll do the very end.
now we have the basic DD setup. I've left the under blanket quite loose under there, so I want that air pocket. But you can see here, you can see the problem right here. Look at that. Look how bad that is. It's just like going to snap off. And there's hardly any pressure on that at all. It's where it's been stitched. So, yeah, it'd be cool, DD, if you could. Other ones the same. Look at that. So, DD, if you're there, get in touch with us. Northern Wilderness Bushcraft. We buy quite a bit off you. Be cool to see what you guys can do about getting it fixed. Um, yeah, it kind of sucks a little bit that that is occurring. And obviously this side, you can see where it's just attached here. It's doing the same thing again here. And you can see where it's snapped on this side. And there's not a lot of weight on it. It's just the way it is. The way it's designed. It's a little bit, bit poo, really. But that could be easily fixed if DD, because they're an amazing company. I know they'll fix it. Um, and hopefully we'll get something resolved with that. Now, Julie's going to demonstrate this. Open it out. I'm sitting and you can see the hammock's loose around it um, around the under blanket the way it should be but it's just really loose at the minute because it's baggy as hell um, just with the clips and everything breaking off which really does suck um, and she's using her boots which I absolutely hate inside the hammock but as you can see she lies inside the hammock with Reef um, how there's gaps below her in the actual under blanket itself and that's kind of where you want it to be um, you want to have a, an air pocket that's formed obviously if where Jilly lies it's the right height for her just to keep her head and neck and stuff warm but if you find that your head and neck's fine because you've got pillows and things below it then you might be able to adjust the under blanket to the feet area over this section if you get cold feet the thing with under blanket is it's not quite long enough it would be nice if it was maybe half a foot longer even maybe a foot longer just so you could actually pull it under your head and under your feet to encapsulate the full area this would obviously keep your feet and your head warm because i've had many a cold night uh even when i change my socks just because my feet go past the under blanket itself the rest of the body's fine and then you adjust yourself and you pull yourself further along but inevitably you're going to slide down under the hammock Right, so that's how you put up a basic, or how I, I should say, put up a um, DD setup. That is a 3x3 DD top with the DD front line and the DD under blanket. Not all technology what you buy is absolutely fantastic. There's a few items I've purchased, not going to mention any more companies, but like Snug Pack, <laughs> things like that. And they've had faults with them, so it's not just this particular company that all have these issues. Now. It's up to you and me and the rest of the people who are out there in the wild to adapt and to be able to deal with these on location when, as and when they snap. So having a mini sewing kit will help you get through little situations like this. Now, I'm going to end the video here, guys. I hope you've enjoyed looking at it. It was my way of doing things. Don't expect you to do the, way, the same way. But if you've got any handy tips um, you might want to share with me, please feel free to comment. Uh, I hope to hear back from you guys. And um, yeah, I'm kind of new to this. This is my really my second video, really. Um, and that's it, really, for me. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else to say. I'm waffling on. So for me, remember guys, I've got my tagline. If you watch my other video on the tripod, it says, uh, leave no trace but knowledge. Sorted. See you. Adios amigos. Yeah. Adios. 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 <laughs>